NASCAR approved makeup dates, and late models off, late models on the schedule, Danielson. <laughs> Calling all press to Martinsville Speedway. <laughs> Young North Carolina late model racer inks Xfinity Series deal. <laughs> Cars Tour wows the crowd at Langley. <laughs> hey, motorheads, this is your race weekend wrap up. NASCAR approved dates at Southern National Motorsports Park for two Sundays, June 23rd and August 18th, which makes it a double header with four late model stock car All-American Series National Point Races available just a few weeks before points cut off September 15th. East Carolina Motor Speedway canceled the late models for the June 15th race night, then added them back less than 24 hours later. On Wednesday, June 12th at 11 a.m., the Martinsville Speedway will host a press conference concerning the 2019 Valley Star Credit 300 featuring NASCAR's late model stock cars. The press conference will feature Martinsville Speedway President Clay Campbell, 2018 Valley Star Credit Union 300 winner C.E. Falk, defending Virginia Triple Crown winner and current NASCAR Wheeling All-American Series National Points leader Peyton Sellers, and four-time NASCAR Wheeling All-American Series National Champion and two-time winner of the Valley Star Credit Union 300, Lee Pulliam, will also be in attendance. Race22.com will be there to cover the announcement and provide updates on our social media. Following a victory and third-place finish at Motor Mile last week, Philip Moore's not so interested in predicting the weather as he'll be trying to predict car counts in the upcoming week. You know, our championship goal is kind of farther out there, and, you know, we kind of hoped that we were going to have a car count here, and when we didn't get it today, it really shocked me for one thing. Then we saw that there was car counts at other places, so we just got to go back to the drawing board and try to figure out, you know, where's the best place for us to settle in. Also getting a victory and third place finish last week, but at South Boston, Peyton Sellers still looking for speed with his new car. You know, we built a new car here back in the spring and, and we've been working, trying to get the bugs worked out of it. It's just kind of new car blues right now. We're gonna get it figured out, but um, right now it's it's a different character altogether. We knew that it just did not like that set of tires. We knew we had to do something. After we qualified, HC said, you know, you can run this one tonight and we're gonna run fifth or we can jump in this other car and give it a shot and see what happens. So. Um, well, we just knew we couldn't run like we were. We were going to be a fifth or sixth place car at best. And, uh, you know, this car proved to be a good car for us. So uh, we had a lot of confidence in this. We built a new car. We just hadn't got it quite ironed out yet. And um, switched over to A&E race cars and just hadn't quite got where we need to be yet with it. Denver, North Carolina native Ryan Repco joins JD Motorsports to drive in the Xfinity Series with his first race coming June 16th at Iowa. Ryan says it's been a long time in the works and is very excited about this opportunity. Oh, it's it's huge. I mean, I'm going to be competing in the second biggest series in North America, um, NASCAR Xfinity Series. It's a total dream come true. It actually goes all the way back to the Mason Mitchell days. I started running for Mason in 2017, but in 2018, uh, J.R. Longley started. Um, they, he, he had his um, PMG management business, and they kind of shared a building with Mason, and he um uh, and duties over at Mason Mitchell Motorsports, and uh, Mark Setzer was the crew chief over at Mason Mitchell. So um, Jr. kind of brought all this together. Jr. has been saying it for years that he he's got all these different connections and all this, and he's able to bring about a plan to um, basically propel young drivers to the top series. And he's been able to do that with several other drivers. So um, we got to working with him, and that's how all this came to be. And then Mark Setzer was the crew chief over at this team. So we began negotiations with them, and he put in a great word for me. And it, it just, there are guys over there from Mason Mitchell's team, and it, it's just come together so nicely. And um, I have a lot of faith in the car, and I have a lot of faith in Mark, so I think we're going to have a good run at Iowa. Several years ago, Ryan tested a ARCA car down in Daytona with Mark Setzer. And Ryan admits having people that he knows already around him helps wash away all the jitters. I remember the first time I tested at Daytona, believe it or not, going 180 plus miles an hour was not my biggest concern. I was more worried that I was going to get like lost in the garage and look stupid and end up somewhere I wasn't supposed to be. But um, it's intimidating to be running in the Xfinity Series. I mean, th those are the big boys. But it, it helps to have some familiar faces and, you know, people that I'm comfortable with around me helping me out. Racing in the Cars Late Model Stock Car Tour, Ryan has always been quick to adapt to new facilities. So being his first time in Iowa, who are you leaning on for advice? And have you hit it up on iRacing? Well, um, I've been talking to a lot of different people about the track. And um, 
I, I do have it on my racing, and I have ran some laps on there, but it, it's normally pretty good for, um, this sounds simple, but they scan the racetrack so everything is proportioned, right? You, you normally end up driving the track kind of different when you get there, but it does help to kind of visualize the racetrack, being able to see just how big it is and where the bumps are positioned. But um, I talked to Josh Berry about it at the last cars race, and he said, get ready, because um, you're going to be going three times as fast, and this place is bumpier. So, um, and that's basically what everybody's been saying. It's a worn-out, bumpy racetrack, but everybody seems to love it, so it should be fun. The Cars Late Model Stock Car Tour rolled into Langley Speedway for the very first time in series history on June 8th. And the series did not disappoint the Langley race fans. Lane Riggs established the first Cars Tour Late Model Stock Car track record in qualifying with a 15.869 lap around Langley. And Riggs also proved to be fast all race long. The racing was intense all night long and the finish, well that was pretty spectacular. Off of turn number four. Side by side for the race lead. Riggs on the outside has to give it up, and now he'll give McCarty a shove. Moves him out of the way. Nose to nose down the back straightaway. McCarty repays the favor. They all crash in turn four, and Deke McCaskill will come through the carnage to win at Larry King Law's Langley Speedway. Holy cow, what a finish. Lane Riggs ended up fifth after the last lap, last turn skirmish. I just, I went for it, you know, I felt like Bobby wasn't getting to across the center too good and I tried to get up under him, I, I really didn't mean to hit him that hard, you know, I meant to just give him a little nudge uh, like he's done before, but you know, that's just racing, I mean, I hope he's not mad at me or anything, I mean, I feel like that was, you know, white flag, that's what you're going to do and, uh, you know, I hate it in like, like it did, uh, congrats to Deke on the win, but I had a good time tonight, I, admit, I gotta admit, I finished the race tonight, uh, I had a good time and I just want to, you know, have a good enough car to be able to run it for the whole night and stay there instead. Adam Lemke finished fourth, Sammy Smith finished third, Bobby McCarty, after it was all said and done, finished second, and was all smiles during a post-race chat with Tony Stevens. Lane going for the win, you know, and, and he's doing what he's supposed to do. I, I'm not, I ain't mad at him by no means. Uh, those green white checkers, man, they get you every time. Uh, you know, we won one last weekend off a of green white checkered, and uh, we lost one tonight over a green white checkered. I'm not mad. It's, it's part of racing, you know what I mean? You, I, I hate the way it turned out. I really do. My guys busted their tails this week, and, and they gave me a really great car. I mean, it was it was really good. We played our strategy to the T. We rode in third till we wanted to go, and uh, when everybody went, I felt like we had the car. And uh, green, white, checkered at a flat racetrack, man. What The fans had to love that. There's no way they didn't. I mean, I, that, that, was a, that was a hell of a race. Uh, congrats to Deke. I'm glad to see him win a race. He, he's a really good guy. I respect him a lot, and... Uh, what do you do? Very my checkers. Deke McCaskill in victory lane says track position was key to his winning opportunity. Yeah, you know, we just charged through the field and got the uh, position ourselves right there. And we were really good on long runs. And I didn't think I had nothing for Bobby. I thought I could get by a lane. But I knew it was going to be tough. And it's just not over, man. It's the way these car stool rules are. And I, I mean, I hate it for Bobby, but what a class act to walk up here and congratulate me, man. That's, 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 uh, that's pretty very special. So, man, I was thinking this week, you know, I've, I'm 41 years old, man. I just, you never know when your last win's gonna happen, man. And I know it's been last April, and you know my daughter's giving me a fit, and your know, dad has been April since you won a race. And I, we crossed the line, and I'm like, did we win this race? I just thought a caution was coming out, and I'm like, yeah, you're the winner. And I, I ran around another lap. I'm like, are you serious? <laughs> this is unbelievable, man. But, uh... That'll do it for this episode of Race Weekend Wrap Up. Until next weekend, we'll see you at the races.